Once again, the mythical musical vault has been opened, and this time fans are getting to hear something familiar. Before they were hits for other people, they were originals. My review of the latest posthumous release from Prince is coming up next on Track by Track. Hey everybody, my name's Kyle, and this is Track by Track, music reviews, news, and commentary. Thanks for tuning in today, and if this is your first time here, please take a second to click subscribe so that you won't miss future reviews and more. It didn't take long after Prince's death in 2016 before fans started to wonder what would become of all the unreleased recordings the artist allegedly had hidden away in his legendary vault. After a somewhat messy battle over who would control the Prince estate and the future of the man's music, we finally got our first real glimpse at what the vault could hold in 2018 with the release of Piano and a Microphone 1983. That intimate recording was rescued from a cassette tape and featured early versions of several songs that would later be released in their final forms on classic albums like Purple Rain and Sign of the Times. When I reviewed that album last year, I talked about how I thought it was more of a, a fans-only release, that it would have limited appeal to anyone but the bigger Prince fans. Another concern that I expressed was whether or not Piano and a Microphone would represent the kind of music we could expect to hear from future Vault releases. See, as interesting as it was, I don't think most Prince listeners will be excited at the prospect of future archive releases if they're mostly rough and raw demos. What I think we're all hoping for is amazing unreleased studio recordings that exude the kind of intensity and sensuality that made us all become infatuated with Prince in the first place. Now there is good news when it comes to the very latest Vault release. Very good news, in fact. But I do still have concerns about what the future may hold. Stick around to the end of this review and I'll talk more about that because I'm curious to know what you all think. But let's talk about Originals, the brand new collection of music from The Vault, released on June 7th, 2019, the day that should have been Prince's 61st birthday. As you probably heard, and as the title plainly suggests, Originals contains Prince's original demo recordings for 15 songs that he wrote, but were ultimately recorded by other artists. And although these are described as demos, they are a far cry from the raw condition of what we heard on piano and a microphone. Nearly every song on Originals sounds as close to a finished product as you could reasonably hope. And any one of these songs could have easily found a home on a Prince album in its time, probably unchanged from what you hear on this release. And if I'm being honest, that's exactly what I was hoping to hear from The Vault. Prince is notoriously a perfectionist in the studio, and fans have long assumed that his castaways were probably at a quality level nearly equal to the songs he ended up releasing. Originals is a bold testament to that. It's truly exciting to hear Prince perform these songs, most of which were recorded in the mid-1980s when the man was just emerging as a superstar. Pretty much anyone who was listening to pop radio during that era will recognize three or four of the quote-unquote hits on this album. Jungle Love became a signature hit for Morris Day and the Time back in 1984, helped in no small part by the monster success of Prince's film and album Purple Rain. The original version here shows that the time didn't stray far from Prince's original ideas, which isn't all that surprising. Then there's Manic Monday, a song that was a top five hit for the Bangles in 1986. Again, Prince's original version is very similar to the one that we all know, but I have to admit, it was a little jarring at first to hear his own voice on a song that is so familiar to so many. But the biggest hit on this album is certainly Nothing Compares to You, a ballad that topped the charts in the U.S. and around the world in 1990 and made singers Sinead O'Connor a household name. This is the only song on Originals that has actually seen multiple releases from Prince in the past. It's been included on multiple greatest hits collections and live albums, so many fans and collectors may already be familiar with how this sounds when Prince performs it. So I won't call either the Prince or the Sinead O'Connor version superior to the other. They're both excellent in their own ways, which ultimately is a testament to what a great songwriter Prince was. If you need need further evidence of that, check out You're My Love. Chances are that the version you hear on Originals is the first version that you've heard, but of course this R&B ballad was not originally recorded by Prince. It was first released by a country music superstar, none other than the legendary Kenny Rogers. Before Originals came out, I actually went and listened to Kenny's version first, and I could totally hear it. Not that 
Kenny's recording sounds like Prince or that the Prince version sounds in any way country, but it is still amazing how versatile a song can be. Most of the music on Originals does lean heavily in the direction of funk and R&B though, which is probably what you'd expect. Prince's versions of Sex Shooter and Makeup, better known by his protege groups Apollonia 6 and Vanity 6 respectively, sound very close to the versions that came before. But of all of Prince's protégés, none is as widely represented here than Sheila E. This new album features four songs by that singer and percussionist who has gone on to become a minor legend in her own right. It's great to hear Prince's tender and seductive piano version of Noon Rendezvous here, not to mention one of my all-time favorite total jams, The Glamorous Life. Incidentally, if you don't have the original Glamorous Life EP by Sheila E., Please track that down. It is outstanding. Other highlights on originals include yet another song first recorded by Morris Day in the time, Gigolos Get Lonely Too. It's a song that never became a hit when it first came out in 1981, but definitely deserves more attention with the original songwriter at the microphone. The same goes for 100 Miles Per Hour, a great funk jam Prince originally gave to R&B band Maserati, who had a minor chart success with their version of the song in 1986. And perhaps the most polished track on originals is Love Thy Will Be Done. This was first recorded by singer Martika in 1991 as a follow-up to her number one song, Toy Soldiers, from 1989. Prince's version is nearly identical to Martika's. Of course, What's most likely is that Martika's recording was in fact based on Prince's demo in the first place. But again, it's hardly something that sounds like a demo. It could be released as a single, as is, right now. Definitely an album highlight for me. Overall, this really is a dream release for any Prince fan. We've known for years that the man was a prolific songwriter and that several acts had had great success recording his songs. Obviously, protege acts like Morris Day in the Time, Apollonia 6, Vanity 6, and Sheila E. owe the man a tremendous musical debt, which is clearly evidenced here. And while the Bangles went on to massive chart success in their own right, it was a Prince song that truly vaulted them into the mainstream. So it is truly rewarding to hear all of these songs finally released the way they were originally conceived. But not only do these recordings show what a versatile songsmith Prince was, they also showcase what a dynamic performer he was. Even in demo form, even on songs he was giving away, he pours his entire soul into the music. None of these recordings lack effort or passion, and together they make a strong statement about one man's musical legacy. This is essential listening for any Prince fan, casual or hardcore which is why I'm giving Originals by Prince an X rating of 9 out of 10. It's a treasure of an album that could well represent the crown jewel of Prince's legendary vault. But let's talk for just a moment about the vault. For decades, it's been the stuff of legend. When Prince died, they actually had to break into the vault to get access to its contents, which were indeed vast. But here's the thing. I suspect that the reality of things is that we're all idealizing the music inside. There's several reasons for that. First of all, there's the idea that if Prince felt what was in the vault was worth people hearing, he would have put it out himself. Of course, as I've said, Prince's throwaways are usually superior to much of what many artists put out on their official albums. Still, I think we have to be pragmatic here and ask ourselves, do we really think we're going to discover albums upon albums of incredible new unreleased music that's on the level of what the man released when he was topping the charts in the 80s and 90s. Look what happened with Michael Jackson. When the album Escape was released five years after his death, fan response to those patched together tracks was tepid at best. And as brilliant a pop artist as Michael was, Prince's actual musicianship far eclipsed most other artists, including Jackson. It would be almost a crime to see other musicians come in and conduct the same kind of post-mortem sacrilege on Prince's unreleased recordings. Then there's the commercial value of the music. While the diehard fans will be thrilled to hear anything new, the truth of the matter is the Prince estate is still running a business enterprise here, which means they're in it to make money. They're looking at everything in the vault and asking themselves what would people be most interested in paying for? The answer? Albums like Originals. Albums featuring music you already know recorded by Prince when he was arguably in his prime. It is much, much easier to sell and market something like that than a collection of, say, 10 brand new, never before heard songs. Sure, the hardcore fans would buy that, but casual fans would be 
tough to attract, and that's where the money is. Which is why the stuff we are most likely to see will be unreleased music that is somehow related to previously released music. That will likely take the form of deluxe editions of albums that include things like live or demo recordings of the album's songs or other songs recorded at the time that didn't end up on the final record. Typical deluxe edition stuff, right? But see, that's what sells. Even if you're repurchasing an album you already own, having those unreleased tracks adds more value and makes it more likely that more people will buy it than if those unreleased tracks got released on their own. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that this is a bad thing. I'd love to see deluxe editions of more Prince albums, Sign of the Times in particular. Throw in some rare b-sides and extended mixes and you've got a winning combination. But I have to admit that I'm not optimistic that we'll ever hear a truly great quote unquote new Prince album emerge from the vault. From what I've heard, the Prince of State has some of today's hottest producers hard at work trying to Frankenstein new music together right now. At best, I hope what they come up with isn't an embarrassment to the man's legacy. But like so many other longtime fans, I'm sure I'll buy it either way. But what do you think? What is it that you want to see come out of the Prince vault? Do you think there's truly great unreleased music in there just waiting to be heard? Or do you think there's a very good reason Prince hadn't released that music already? Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Once again, my name is Kyle, and this has been Track by Track. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Plus, check out some of these other videos below that I think you might also enjoy. And of course, be sure to subscribe, because true music fans always want new releases the day they come out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.